morning. Good morning. Whoa. And welcome to Trinity Episcopal Cathedral on this most auspicious Feast of Pentecost Sunday, especially for me. I received my first communion many, 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 many years ago on Pentecost Sunday, so it always has a special place in my heart. I'd like to welcome those of you who are with us on social media, especially Father Tony, who you will hear about uh, later on in my sermon. I told him I would send him a copy. And so we begin our wonderful celebration this morning with our, oh, oh, by the way, everything's down here today because of my uh, tennis injury, and I can't negotiate the big steps for uh, probably at least a month. It's not a liturgical change uh, that I'm imposing upon you. It's, uh, it's about um, necessity is the mother of invention, and I just didn't think we needed a drama of me falling down the stairs. Uh, and also, communion, because of that, will be given out uh, in the old style because it's difficult for me to travel laterally. Okay? So that's just to clarify everything. And we will begin. Alleluia! Christ is risen! be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the Lord be with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Spread abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of this morning's lessons. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> the Holy Scripture today comes from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No. This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We will now read Psalm 104, responsibly by half verse. How vast are your works, God, all of them created in wisdom. Behold, the sea, its distance is huge and wide. There, ships lunge forth on the water. All of them look towards you. You provide it to them. They harvest it. You hide your face, and they are confounded, confused. You send forth your breath, and they are created. 
your glory continues forever. The one who gazes toward earth and it trembles. I will sing out to God with my life. I will sweeten my conversation for your sake. Stand and wander, O oh my soul, before the eternal. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth 
whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I'm going to say something very profound. There is no time, no place, no event, no person, no circumstance whatsoever in which the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ is not fully present, fully operative, fully powerful, fully inviting, fully among, in, and with us and all creation, always. Do you have it? It is not something we get as if to say we don't already possess or more accurately are possessed by. There is no time or place or person in which the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ is not fully present. So what's the problem? The problem is not with the Holy Spirit. The problem is not with the Lord Almighty. The problem is not with Jesus Christ, risen, resurrected, ascended, and sent. The problem is the challenge for us to be able to receive and believe and accept that we too, by virtue of Jesus' gift, participate fully in that divine truth, always and eternally, and then the caveat, yet to be fully realized. Four weeks ago, I preached a text from John where the temple elite challenged Jesus very impatiently, saying something to the effect uh, when are you going to make it really clear, are you the Messiah or are you not the Messiah? And poor Jesus is saying to them in response, well, you've seen what I've been up to, you've seen what I've been doing, uh, how much more can I do? How much more do you want? What more can I do to have you realize and recognize that which I say and do is true. Good question. Fast forward from chapter 10 to today's chapter 14, we have the beginning of the farewell address. Jesus is saying, as he did yesterday in, in our remembrance of your beloved husband, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. Believe in God. If it were not so, would I have not told you that I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you also will be and you know the way. You don't have that today, but it's just before Philip's question. Thomas, remember Thomas? He responds, well, we don't know the way. How will we even know the way? And what does Jesus say to Thomas? Oh, good grief, Thomas. 
I am the way. Do you know me? Well, Thomas has been with him for three years. And Jesus is saying, I'm the way, Thomas. You know me, so don't worry. You got it. On the heels of that query, Philip says, still not convinced, Jesus, can't you tell us plainly, are you the Messiah or not? I mean, can you just do it plainly so that we can understand? And again, Jesus, confounded, is going to say, what more do I have to do with you people? What more do I have to say? How many dances do I have to dance before you will hear and see and believe and receive that which I proclaim, that which I incarnate, that which I want to give you? How much more? You can just hear them, the frustration. Well, there's just something about human nature that wants proof, right, on our terms. That means I want to see it, touch it, taste it, smell it. You know, hear, touch, sight, taste, and smell it. I want to be convinced. I want an experience of this Holy Spirit you're talking about. Or I, I, just, I just can't go along. I can imagine Jesus saying something like this, tongue-in-cheek. My God, if somebody rose from the dead, what more would it take to prove to these people? We're chuckling. But there are a lot of people that say, well, that's just a myth, right? That didn't really happen. Poor Jesus. Well, I'm here to say it's not a myth. It really does happen, did happen, always happens, will continue to happen, and never didn't happen. The Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, has always been, always is, and always will be. Doing what? Creating? Descending? Incarnating? Suffering? Dying? rising, ascending, and today, sending. These events are continuously occurring and will continue to occur until the end of time or for each and every one of us until we get it that it's true for Jesus in his humanity, the gift that he gives, and that means it's true for you and it's true for me, and it's true for us, as it was for the apostles and the disciples and all the people forever and ever, if they would have an experience and come to trust and believe and ultimately give gratitude to God for having made this wonderful creation so possible. Now, I could stop there, but I have two stories, and they're true stories. And Father Tony, who's watching right now in San Antonio, was my priest at St. John Newman Roman Catholic Church when I was uh, an infant in the spiritual life. And um, he's a great friend of mine. And one day we were talking about the charismatic movement. This was in the uh, early 80s when I was living there. And I was uh, curious, and uh, he said, well, let me tell you a story. Father Tony is an Irish priest from Ireland, transported to the United States, because we needed missionaries, remember? And he had a bunch of kick, sidekicks that lived in San Antonio, good guys. And Father Diorio, who is a faith healer, authorized by the Roman Catholic Church, like the real deal, was coming to San Antonio to give uh, prayer services and healing services. Well, Tony and his friends were like, oh, yeah, right. And there was a deanery meeting. That meant the bishop required everybody to go to see Father Diorio 
And are you ready to be prayed over? Well, Tony and his friends were like, let's go have a beer. Let's have some dinner. We got to go to this thing. And they go and they show up and all the clergy, this is only for clergy, are there. And Father Diorio uh, comes out. They have, not a Eucharist, they have a worship service. And then it comes time for them to be blessed by Father Diorio. And they're, uh, Tony and his friends are no, oh, okay. And everybody had to get up and go down the line and be prayed over. Well, not to be a party pooper, they all got up. And as they began to walk down the aisle, they began to notice there were people falling down on the floor. And they're getting a little nervous. Oh, this is ridiculous. Can't you imagine? So they get up there, and guess what happens? Guess what happens? Down they go. Down they go. What happened? The Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, accommodated their consent. There had to be a little crack in their skepticism, a little crack in their cynicism, a little crack in their hilarity, and that's evidently all the Holy Spirit needs. Just give him an inch and he takes you down. What and why and how and for what purpose? That in the life of Tony, as we talked last night, was yet to be revealed in its fullness. But one thing that was undeniable, absolutely true, is something happened to him that had never happened to him before. He was vaguely curious and consented. That's all it took. The fruit of that event, according to Tony, was a prayer life that prayed then, in the normal ways, for gratitude and for a continued deepening and strengthening of his trust in the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, who accommodated him and showed him something that changed his life. This is what the Holy Spirit can do. Next story. I graduated from Oblate School of Theology in San Antonio in 1983. At that time, I was very active in the Roman Catholic Church. I led the folk choir. I did spiritual catechesis. I did all of that stuff, sort of like Mary does here. You know, I was one of those lay people that every priest says, oh, isn't that wonderful? And I graduated with all A's. It was a wonderful experience. I was in a second class that admitted women at that time. And I was interviewing for a job at St. Vincent de Paul Roman Catholic charismatic church. I didn't know anything about the charismatic movement. I'd heard about it. I was, you know, vaguely interested, but I grew up in New York where everything was very conservative. Immaculate Heart of Mary Roman Catholic Church, the catechism, no Pentecostal bone in my body. But I wanted the job. And Father McKenna was the rector, the priest in charge, and he said, well, Sandy, it would probably be a good idea if you came to the church and experienced our worship. And I thought, well, that's okay. That sounds like a good idea. Polite, dressed properly. It was a Wednesday night. It was not a Eucharist. It was a prayer service, charismatic prayer service. Never been to one. Well, let me tell you. There were like 150 people there. And there were stations all around the church with lay people and ordained religious men, nuns, praying over people who would come forward either individually with their children as a family. Some church, house churches came as groups. 
and they would present themselves to be prayed over. And I was an observer. It was fascinating. I mean, people were speaking in tongues, people were laying on the floor, people were dancing in the aisle, the, the drums were playing, the guitars were singing. I mean, it was like amazing. Amazing to me. When it was all over, about an hour and a half, this is a big deal, um, everyone was sort of leaving and, and the church was emptying out, and Father McKenna came over to me and he said, well, Sandy, what did you think? Well, I didn't know what to say. Uh, I was polite, oh, this is wonderful, it was absolutely marvelous, I mean, I'm, I'm blown away. And then he said to me, well, did you get prayed over? What do you think I said? Well, no, 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 no. I was just here to observe, remember? I was just here to observe. And then he said, well, would you like me to pray over you? And my interior dialogue was, no! No, I do not want you to pray over me. But what came out of my mouth was, in light of the position that I was so hoping to get, I said, well, of course. Of course, pray over me. With absolutely no belief or intent that anything was going to happen because I was not into this at all. But evidently, it was going to be into me. So I stood there, and uh, let's see, I can, let's, there's nobody here that I can get. Um, and and I, he was much taller than I was, and he lays his hands on my head, as I had seen. And I thought, okay, I, I, I'm just going to stand here and let him do his thing. Well, he's, he, remember, he's been doing this for an hour and a half. So he is, he is revved up, right? And he lays his hands on my head, and he starts the whatever, uh, speaking, I don't know what he was saying. Um, Jesus, just sort of like a, kind of like a, uh, a combination of singing and speaking and, and uh, praying. And I just stood there. And all of a sudden, I began to feel as if melted wax or water or warm, I don't know, wax is the best image I have. It was on, on my head, and it, it sort of came down my face like this, and down my neck, and I remember noticing it. Like, I was thinking, what is that? You know, I have never had that before. And uh, it, it just continued to go down my arms and my torso and my stomach and my legs, and then I I was beginning to feel a little wobbly, and what do you suppose happened when it got to my knees? I was down, and I was so embarrassed. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I was down on the floor. He seemed pickled peach. I mean, to him, it was like the most normal, wonderful thing in the world for me. It was an experience. Something happened, and I am a believer in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ on that particular night. But then the question becomes, as it did for those in the Pentecost event, and can for any of us at any time, by the way, even here in this church called Trinity Cathedral, for what purpose, for what intent, for what difference will it make? Well, for me, it was yet to be revealed. And for all of us in this parish, yet to be revealed. That it will be revealed is unquestionable, absolutely sure. And it'll be unique and perfectly tailored for each and every one of us. And look at me now. I mean, who would have ever believed that this good little Roman Catholic girl who is taught that she cannot image Christ, because it's a man, uh, could stand and witness and proclaim and celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ here in this place. Now that is what the power of the Holy Spirit is capable of. Nothing is outside of its power, even to bring 
some sort of healing and wholeness and hope into our broken world, which I do not have to go into any detail about at this present moment. There is a theological term I learned at Oblate called indefectibility. Has anybody ever heard that one? And I love it because we live in such a broken world, such a broken church, such a broken humanity. And sometimes we wonder, and perhaps you have, where is God? This term says, quote, the Holy Spirit will not be absent eternally. Indefectibility means the Spirit cannot, will not, ever be put to rest. It is always potential and waiting and active and will express itself for good. Indefectibility. The Holy Spirit will not err indefinitely. We feel as if, as if the Spirit is absent. Look what's going on. That's at the present moment, but it is not and it will not be forever. That is the truth in our own lives and in the community's life as followers of the way of Jesus Christ. Yes, the Holy Spirit is an advocate. Yes, the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ is a teacher and a consoler and a supporter and is present and active. Always please remember that all are one in Christ Jesus. God is one. God's only begotten Son, one of God, is begotten only of the Father and one in being with the Father, only begotten of and begotten only of. And so are you and so are we according to Jesus, individually expressing the divine life in our own particular life. As Jesus' individualized life expressed the divine life in his flesh appearing. Not separate and apart. Wherever the Father is, the Spirit is, the Son is. Wherever the Son is, the Spirit is, the Father is. That includes everything and everyone, always. So we are like the Spirit hovering over creation, like the Spirit that was in the burning bush, like the Spirit in that reading where the heaven is torn open and the spirit is present, like the angel that appears to Mary, fear not. Like the Holy Spirit that is breathed by Jesus upon his apostles that night in the upper room. Receive the Holy Spirit. Breathe the Holy Spirit. Be breathed by the Holy Spirit. Participate in the mystery of God's creation. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All are one. Creating, incarnating, living, suffering, dying, rising, ascending, and sending out into the world. This is the ongoing Pentecost which we celebrate today. Amen.
And now as a Pentecostal community of faith who harbor the presence of the Holy Spirit, let us stand and make our liturgical affirmation of faith together. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous and beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are God. We worship you. The prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world, remember especially the people of Ukraine. For the just and proper use of your creation, being friends with Mother Earth. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, remembering especially Beth, Bob, Stephen, Shirley, Carol, and Virginia. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Santos, our bishop. For God's people at Christ Church, St. Michael's, as they celebrate 350 years of mission. We give thanks for their rector, the Reverend Steve Mosher, and his wife, Kristen. We give thanks for the witness of God's people at La Iglesia de la Seglara Familia de Jesus in Kennedyville, and for their pastor, the Reverend Tom Sinat, and his wife, Elena. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for the altar flowers given to the glory of God in loving memory of Edmund Partridge by Carol Carlson. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name Who speaks Spanish here? I know. Would you read these? Because I know I will mispronounce and I don't want to. It's too important. These are the names of all of the children.
who put their trust in you. And we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. And together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And may the peace of this present Lord through the power of his Holy Spirit, be always with you. And as you feel comfortable, arms, uh, elbows, let us extend a sign of God's peace to one another. <laughs> peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good to see you. Peace be with you. I love your support. <laughs> peace be with you. You knew what I was talking about. Peace be with you. Thank you. Oh, oh, whatever. <laughs> nice to see you. So um, that was quite a sermon. Hello, Father Tony. Um, I called him because whenever I give such a story, I, I always try to, uh, well, I won't do it unless I have permission to tell the story, because that's a, that's a pretty heavy-duty story. Um, but I thought it was pretty appropriate. I actually called his old number. I haven't talked to him in maybe 30 years. And uh, I got his old rectory, and the number was a new priest. And so I had to explain who I was and what I wanted, and I said enough things that he figured, well, she must be telling the truth. She knew what the gospel was and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So he called Father Tony, who's still in San Antonio, and he was driving back uh, from uh, visiting a, 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 a uh, parishioner whose son had been uh, killed in a car accident. And so I, I picked up the phone, and he goes, Sandy? <laughs> I said, Tony? And so we had this wonderful, wonderful conversation, and it just felt so good uh, to, uh, to, to reconnect with him and for him to share that story. He also had two other experiences, one with Father McNutt, who was a very famous uh, charismatic writer at that time, and, and then another uh, priest also at, at a uh, retreat center, similar. So I kind of uh, conflated the, the stories. The, the point was the same, though. And uh, so, so it was just a wonderful, uh, a wonderful time. And I told him that we were going to video it, and I would send it to him. So anyway, that's the story. Do we have any closet charismatics here? We did at the other service. No. Yeah, I could tell. I, they started this, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, it's really, it doesn't have to be flashy. Um, it, it's, it's very true, though. We, we want proof, don't we? experiential and the, the spirit will accommodate us if we give it half a chance and what the what, only thing that's really necessary is a certain curiosity or a certain interest and in the case of of tony and myself uh, we showed up i mean you know you're there so that was enough <laughs> that was a consent by uh environment i guess you'd say uh so there are a few announcements in the um bulletin. I, I don't know if you're in the bulletin. Maggie and I had a busy, busy week. And I know Susan has an announcement. Um, but, uh, well, Susan, why don't you do yours briefly, if you would.
Okay, so thank you, thank you very much, Susan. And it might be possible to set up a GoFundMe through uh, parishioners' interest and, and accessibility. But thank you very much, Susan. Um, are there any other announcements for the good? Um, great contribution. The um, Garden Guild yesterday was here in full force. And please enjoy and notice the beautiful grounds. We had a magnificent send-off for Edmund. There were 75 people here. The place was packed. And the energy was wonderful. And so we're very grateful uh, to Lynn and to her family uh, for that. Uh, and um, Taze service a week from, what's, what's the date? The 14th at 6, correct? And we are having one service a month outside. And Amy, it's the third Sunday of the month. So this is the first Sunday of the month. So it won't be next week. It'll be the following week, which means we will audio video the 8 o'clock service with sermon, etc. cetera. We, uh, uh, we will not be able to do it at the 1030 because we'll be out unless it rains uh, with the chairs. Okay. So Teze, a uh, week from Tuesday, and two weeks, two weeks from today, outside, at, I'll remind you, at 10.30. Anything else for the good? Anything else? We're tremendous response. Uh, Greg should go away more often. The volunteer sheets are full. <laughs> right? The only one I'm missing, I need, I invited one person, but I haven't heard back from... Uh, Phil, my friend, my tennis friend, Phil, Episcopalian, we need one more male mentor for the confirmation group. Other than that, we're full up. So if you're male and you're interested in accompanying one of our youth uh, through that process, please let us know. Okay? So this altar sentence that we say every Sunday is just really a summary of what I preached. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. All one. Please rise.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he destroyed death. By his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life, and therefore we praise you. Joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, with elbow or hand, whatever your comfort, let us join and pray in the words that our Savior gives us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Gracious God, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
for the gifts of God, for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving and know all who desire are always welcome to this table. You may be seated. <coughs> the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, to you and to the Lord Jesus Christ. I knew it's come over. The body of Christ broken for you, who I stand with. The body of Christ broken for me. Oh, you want me to come to you? Okay. Jesus, who loves all this life. Oh, did I get you wrong? Oh, where's your sister? who loves Libby too the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you most beloved the body of Christ broken for you the body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto life the body of Christ welcomes you to this place. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ blesses you and welcomes you this day. Please stand for our closing prayer, post-communion prayer found in your worship booklet on page 13, and let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, 
We thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And as you go out into the world, be of good courage, holding fast to what is good. Render to no one evil for evil, or violence for violence, or hatred for hatred. Feed the hungry. Clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, visit the prisoner, always remember the poor, and honor the dignity of every human being. And the one who is the child of Mary, the one who is Son of God, the one who is Holy Spirit, come upon you and upon me now and remain with us always. Amen. rejoicing in the spirit thanks be to God alleluia alleluia what happy day yes it was a good day and a good day it's always a good day Good to see you. Thank you. Yes, right over there. Oh, elbows, elbows. Good to see you. He'll be gone for three months. I know. We don't know. But just for three months. He'll be back in September. Oh, okay. Okay.
Thanks for sitting there. 